Diphenhydramine, otherwise known as Benadryl, is a common antihistamine mainly used to treat allergies, but also can treat insomnia and symptoms of the common cold. This medicine can be injected, applied to the skin, and taken orally, and is so ubiquitous that it doesn't require a prescription to obtain. And unfortunately, its accessibility is the reason why it's so readily abused. When taken in high doses, diphenhydramine is a powerful deliriant. And this is important to note. While deliriants do cause hallucinations, they aren't psychedelics. Deliriants make you experience psychosis. These substances literally delay and prevent specific neurotransmitters from firing. This can cascade to whole portions of your brain simply not functioning properly. And one of the biggest distinctions between psychedelics and deliriants is that after the psychedelic trip is over, most people return to a normal state of mind. Deliriants don't. You will have permanent psychosis after the trip is over. And specifically in the case of diphenhydramine, a high enough dose isn't simply going to give you psychosis, but will absolutely take your life. Many online trends and memes that surround the consumption of Benadryl pills have led to the literal deaths of teenagers. This 14-year-old girl in particular who was participating in the Benadryl challenge on TikTok took 14 Benadryl pills. She began to experience symptoms of delirium, her heart rate rose to 199, and she died at the hospital. This is the reality of diphenhydramine abuse, and in this video you will hear three stories from individuals who chose to abuse this drug. All three stories were sourced from Arrowid.org, a website dedicated to drug harm reduction and drug trip reports. And if you're interested in reading more stories like the ones that you're about to hear, the link to Arrowid.org can be found in the description box down below. Our first story was posted by Cheshire on February 7th, 2005. Having been interested in acid and other hallucinogens in the past, but being unable to obtain them, when I found out about diphenhydramine, I was immediately interested. So, one night, when I didn't have school the next day, I bought a pack of Benadryl Allergy. My roommate was in the room for the trip, but unaware that I was tripping. I didn't want to alarm him. He wouldn't have turned me in, but I didn't want to be a bother. And I figured if worse came to worse, he would be there if I needed him. I started off slow, with 10 tablets, approximately 250 milligrams. After about an hour or so, nothing happened. It was at this time that my roommate turned off the lights and went to bed. The only lights now being from the window and my computer. At this point, I took two more tablets and waited half an hour. Having read another report and computing the dosages taken, I decided to take five more tablets for a total of 425 milligrams in my system. Then I lay down and waited for it to begin. My limbs were trembly and spasmed every now and then. Laying down was very uncomfortable. About a half an hour later, the ceiling took on a weird gelatinous appearance, consistent with other reports. I then decided to get up and listen to a little music. I didn't hear any distortion of the music, but I could hear my name being called over it. After turning off the music, I turned to see a black woman in a cape and a large fur cat sitting next to my roommate. She explained to me that he was very sick and that she needed to heal him. She also told me not to be alarmed, so I turned back to my computer. This episode took about an hour. Immediately after that, the trip turned nasty. I can't explain why. Although I believe it may be because of my additional five pills in my system. I am notorious for leaving dishes around the room, and the light from my computer fell on one of them. But it wasn't normal. It was moving. On closer inspection, it was filled with thousands of clear baby spiders. I screamed, but it was only in my head, as my roommate didn't wake up. Looking away, I tried to focus on my computer. I felt something brush my foot, but I didn't look down. However, I saw a flicker of movement near the edge of my desk, and I wish I hadn't looked. Slowly, what looked like a huge furry pipe cleaner rose up from the edge. Then it tensed itself and contorted itself into a giant wolf spider, whose body was about the size of my head, with gigantic legs. Looking away, I could see four or five more of them, all of them running very fast, like cheetah speed, along the floor. Gritting my teeth, I slipped on my shoes and ran quickly outside of my room. I was in the main hall of my floor, where it was considerably brighter. 
At this point, I was fully locked in delusional reality. I went to my bathroom, nervously checking around for spiders. Urination was painful, but was over quickly. I went to the drinking fountain, drank, and heard a growl from my left. There was a blue tabby cat with distorted features and big fangs. It growled at me and ran very fast and leapt at me. I put up my arm and it exploded midair. The fragments turned into long beaked flatworms with beady red eyes. They huddled together and screamed at me. I closed my eyes and when I opened them, they were gone. I couldn't stay in this hallway, but I was not about to go back to the spiders. Opening my door confirmed that they were still there. I decided to go to the main lounge of the building, into the public, or at least public at 1.30 a.m. Running quickly down the stairs, I reached the lounge with no more events. I sat down for a moment because I was badly dizzy and my heart was racing. I would have measured my pulse, but I didn't have a clock nearby. Three people walked by and asked me what I was doing. I said that I couldn't sleep and that I was down there to pass the time. Both mine and their voices sound hollow and echoey and I was slurring very badly. They eventually gave up and walked away. I'm almost sure they were real because closing my eyes didn't remove them, although it didn't remove the spiders either. I paced around the lounge for a while, but upon seeing a pair of spiders fighting, normal sized ones this time, I walked quickly in the opposite direction. I found out shortly that I was walking in the direction of the most horrifying hallucination yet. Reaching a series of benches, I was about to sit down when I saw movement under the bench, in the shadows, was a large, bumpy shape. I moved a little to see what it was. I couldn't scream. It was a giant crab about the size of my torso, excluding legs and claws. The claws were about the size of my arms and clicked together horribly. It had a pug's face with beady yellow eyes and one of the worms from before, now brown, protruded from the back of the shell. There were other, smaller, normal crabs behind it. One of the claws would spasm from time to time. Although I had no grip on time, I must have stared at it, barely breathing for ten minutes or more. I ran full speed back to where the spiders were battling. It was then when I realized that one of them was not a spider at all. It was one of the worms, this time green with thousands of gossamer thin legs and it was using them to spin silk into long nets and lassos. I saw about four or five more of them, though, through the course of my trip. I spent the rest of the night panicking between those two horrors, until I could see the sun coming up outside. Then I went back to my room, where the spiders had disappeared, and promptly went to bed. I can't remember if I dreamed or not. The next day, I felt very fatigued, and my arms shook like I had Parkinson's disease. I felt very sick to my stomach. No hallucinations persisted, although I had trouble balancing and sometimes seemed to slip while walking. Fortunately, these symptoms eventually faded. Although this was a terrible, nightmarish experience, I've not ruled out using it again. After some time has passed, probably at a lower dosage as well, should a second trip bad occur, it will likely end my experimentation with this drug. However, I cannot, in good conscience, recommend this experience to anyone else. Diphenhydramine definitely has a harsh quality about it, even without the nightmarish hallucinations. Our second story was posted by Jason on February 29th, 2016. I am going to describe one of the most disturbing experiences of my life and of my family's, following a very high dosage of diphenhydramine. It started late one night. I was bored and wanted to get high off of something. I was feeling depressed and had no access to any other drugs. I have had a lot of experience with psychedelics, so I thought it would be fun to explore a diphenhydramine trip. I was alone in my room around 11 o'clock when my family was in bed. I had a full bottle of Benadryl and took one gram of diphenhydramine. About an hour later, I was starting to feel sedated and started to have mild hallucinations. All the lights were off in my room and I could see the silhouette of objects starting to form in thin air though I could not ascertain what they were. I also started seeing clear spiders form on my bed, which I did not like because there are brown recluse spiders in my house, and I could not tell if they were real or not, so I decided to quickly turn the lights back on. An hour and 30 minutes have passed, and my memory went completely blank. I do not remember a thing about the trip during the night, but now I know I was awake the whole time because of the shape of my room in the morning. It's 7 a.m., and this is when things got very scary. I came back to awareness with my mom talking to me on my bed. 
I could feel I was very intoxicated, but I didn't remember what I took. My mom was very close to my face and looking at me very strangely. Finally, she asked what I was on. I told her nothing, but my mental state and body language was very revealing. Being in the middle of a very intense trip and having my mom aggressively question me and give me a very suspicious and threatening looks sent me into a state of paranoia that eventually evolved into a full-blown paranoid psychotic state. An hour passes and at this point the whole house was aware that I was in an altered state. I was in a state of sheer terror as everyone around me was questioning me and staring at me. I was so wired up with fear, paranoia, and disorganized thoughts that my eyelids were pried open receding nearly into my eye sockets, giving me a psychotic look. My brother, who has seen a lot of psychotic and schizophrenic people while he was homeless, said I had the classic look in my eyes and face of someone suffering with schizophrenia. It was a look of terror and complete confusion. Accompanied by the insane look in my eyes, I was having paranoid auditory hallucinations of voices and disorganized speech and thought processes. Between 8 and 9 a.m., at this point, I felt nearly brain dead. My short-term memory was completely gone. I would begin a sentence and then completely forget what I was talking about. Or one of my family members would ask me something and I would start answering it and then forget what they asked and what I was even saying in response. Even worse, I was having vivid auditory hallucinations of my family members saying things to me that they weren't, and the hallucinations were in the tone of their voice and their mannerisms. And at that very moment, I would see their mouths move to what I thought they were saying as well. It was impossible to tell what was real and what was not. I was completely paranoid and kept hearing them saying negative things about me or our relationships. This started a long process of having arguments with my family members about things they did not say. In the midst of the experience, I was talking complete gibberish about esoteric ideas one might have during an acid trip and how they related to subjects or ideas that had no connection to what I was saying or to any conversation I was having with my family at the time. My family said the things I was saying were so crazy they could not describe it. The whole time I thought I was making sense. Between 9 and 10 a.m., my memory at this point became so bad and my body movements and language were so unnatural and disorganized that my brother began to fear for his life because I was lost in a deep psychotic state. He told me afterwards the look on my face was that of the mass murderer James Holmes in one of his lineup photos. My brother armed himself with a bowie knife because he did not know what I was capable of. My mom was so afraid to enter the room I was in, she had to push my brother into it to deal with me. I do not remember much of what the actual experience of the mental state was, but I remember it feeling very much like I would think someone with schizophrenia or psychosis experiences. No way to differentiate what is real and what is not. And little awareness of one's actions, thoughts, or words. I believe I was in a drug-induced psychosis. As far as the visual hallucinations, they were very similar to coming up on a shroom trip with very wavy walls and moving objects, but the most profound part of the experience was the head state and delusional and disorganized thoughts. Between 10 and 11 a.m., I finally began to come down off the drug and could make more sense of reality and my short-term memory did come back. I gave up trying to talk to my family because I could not determine if they were really saying anything or not. I looked around my room and I had thrown medication everywhere. I urinated in a chair, on my bed, and on the carpet sometime during the night. I feel so sorry for my family who had to watch me literally lose my mind in fear that I might not be sane again. I tried to talk to my brother about the experience a week later to find out what happened. He said it was one of the scariest experiences of his life, and this man personally witnessed a decapitation. He could not describe the nature of my mental state or what I was saying. I see it now as one of those experiences where there are very subtle details that are hard to describe and the experience as a whole was so complex that the depth of its disturbing nature can't be put into words. It took me nearly a week to recover. I was hallucinating for days. I would stop hallucinating for a little while, go to sleep, and then wake up hallucinating again and feeling like I was back in the same headspace. Luckily, the hallucinations and disassociative thoughts went away after a week. I will never do Benadryl in high doses again, and I strongly recommend not trying this drug. In retrospect, the experience did give me a great insight into what a schizophrenic or psychotic person experiences. It was as if the wires in your brain cross, and the processing of intercommunicating data in your brain mix, and the resulting perpetual experiences and self-expression is idiosyncratic to your surrounding reality and the events taking place. So you're left saying things that you think make sense and have meaning to people that don't exist. 
You're left hopelessly confused and convinced by the vivid hallucinations and delusions your mind validates. It also left me with great sympathy towards psychotic and schizophrenic people, because that state was hellish for me and for my family. Our third story comes from user Wen. It was posted February 12th, 2003. I have taken smaller doses of diphenhydramine before, about 400 to 500 milligrams or so, and not had any real lasting problems, so I figured it was okay to take more without experiencing any ill effects. I was walking to school one morning in October, and I stopped by the grocery store on the way there to pick up the pills. I purchased a bottle of 32 50 milligram gel tabs of Unisom, a sleep aid, and a Butterfinger bar. As I left the store and continued on my way to school, I downed 16 of the little blue pills. This was at about 6.20 a.m. I was looking for a way to not remotely be myself at school that day, a chance to be so out of it that I could sleep through class and just waste the day away without having to think too much. Needless to say, I got more than I bargained for. Anyways, I continued to walk to school and was basically fine until about 6.50 or 6.55 when I arrived. I walked through the building for a few minutes, but because I was a little early, not too many people were there, so I wandered back outside. Outside, I was walking past the gym when I saw this guy that I sort of knew. He was a good friend of one of my friends, and he said hi as I walked past. I said hi as well, and was anxious to make my way past him and go into the school, but then he noticed that I wasn't walking exactly straight, and he asked me if I was okay. I told him that I was fine, which wasn't true. I was not anywhere near fine, but that's what I said anyways. He didn't quite believe me, I think he thought I was drunk or something, because I was walking all crooked and kept tripping, and I wasn't talking like the most intelligent person either. At this point, I was starting to feel the drug majorly. I was having a hard time walking, especially with my book bag on. It felt like I was being pushed down by some unknown force, like someone turned up the gravity or something. My tongue was becoming increasingly larger, and it wasn't working too well. I would try to say something, and instead of using my tongue to form words, it just kept getting in the way. So he kept asking me what was wrong, and I kept telling him that I was fine, just leave me alone and let me go on, but he wouldn't let me go. He was telling me that I was not okay and I needed help. Then a teacher or someone came by. I don't know if someone went to go get her or she just happened to be walking by, but she sat me down in a chair and told me to rest and calm down. Well, I tried to sit down, but I kept slipping out of the chair, and finally I just ended up laying on the concrete right outside of the gym there. I kept trying to get up, but no one would let me. Some other teacher or administrator people came by and they kept asking me questions. They were asking me what I had taken and how much. I wouldn't tell anyone, so the lady said that I had to tell her, and if I didn't, then she was calling 911. That scared me, because I didn't want to go to the hospital. I had done this before, and if I just had some time to let it wear off, I would be fine. At this point, I don't remember too much of what happened next, just bits and pieces, but I think my friend's friend and some other teacher helped me walk to the attendance office, and they put me in a chair. I vaguely remember the lady calling 911 and giving the address of the school to whoever was on the line. I remember seeing the paramedics come in a little after that. These two guys in all blue came into the office. That is the last thing I remember until the hospital. But according to my friends who came into the office, I was passed out on the floor and it looked like I was dead. I was then loaded onto a stretcher and wheeled out of the office into an ambulance where I was taken to the hospital. I don't remember being on the stretcher or in the ambulance. But the very next thing I remember is seeing this lady, about 25 years old or so, and she was trying to get me to drink this stuff. And I didn't want to. So she shoved this tube down my nose and through my throat and into my stomach and put the charcoal into me that way. I think I passed out again after that, but the next time I woke up, I remember looking around and thinking, where the hell am I? And noticed the IV in my arm, and then I looked down and saw that I wasn't wearing any clothes. I was just wearing a hospital robe. I thought, what happened to my clothes? And I noticed I wasn't wearing any underwear either. And the sad part was that I didn't know if that was because someone had removed them, or I had just forgotten to put underwear on that morning. Then, I remember my grandmother and my parents came in and tried to talk to me, but I was still not totally there. My mom tells me I was saying things that made absolutely no sense, and even talking to people who weren't in the room at all. 
I was still having hallucinations also. The walls were moving and I was hearing things as well. I had to stay in the hospital for a few more hours until my heart rate and blood pressure were back to normal and they IV'd enough saline or whatever into me to make me get up and pee about four times. A man came in and talked to me and asked me if I was trying to commit suicide and he said that I was going to be admitted to the local behavioral center or mental hospital basically. So I was checked out of the hospital and checked into the behavioral center where I had to stay in as an inpatient, meaning that I had to spend the night there for four straight days. After that, I was allowed to go home at night, but come back to the day program from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for five more days. I was put on antidepressants and I was suspended from school for three days as well because when I was passed out, the school searched my book bag and found the rest of the Unisom, some Advil, and a lighter. I have to go to a drug and alcohol abuse program for two weeks and continue with counseling after that. In all, I missed seven days of school, my chance to go to homecoming, and now my parents are more paranoid than ever. I nearly died in that hospital. Now you tell me, is it really worth it to take a few pills and try to change your mindset for a few hours and risk all of that? I don't think it could happen to me either, but it did. All I know is, I will never touch that drug again, nor any other. It's just not worth it. Hello, hello everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any specific trip requests, let me know in the comments down below as well. Uh, I am open to any deliriant, any crazy substance that you want me to cover because it seems like you guys really like these trip reports. I'm very happy to say that we reached 30,000 subscribers. I mean, we're over 30,000 subscribers now, but we reached 30,000 on this channel. That's impressive. That's incredible amount of people. Way too many people that I thought would be interested in stuff like this. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Keep an eye out for two more uploads, one tomorrow and one Saturday. Uh, I'm going to maintain a upload schedule of Thursday, Friday, Saturday for this channel. It made the most sense, and everybody likes good videos on the weekend. All right, that's the end of my spiel. That's all I got to say. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.